Hey guys, what's going on? I'm Sam Crack and I'm on a mission, maybe not today, but in this video at some point, I wanna get the Corvette started. I'm ready to hear that thing running. And I was given a tip online that might actually help us accomplish that. Now, this is a very strange tip and personally, I'm very skeptical that it will work, but I'm gonna try it nonetheless. I'm gonna meet up with Turbo Mike. Got a little bit of suspension work, few things to finish up the underside of the car, and then we're gonna work on getting it started. So let's meet up when we get to the Corvette itself. So we have a lot of stuff going on today. Our goal is still to get the Corvette started. Now, what you see here is an ECU that should be programmed uh, to the VIN of this Corvette. That came, uh, and then what we're working on right now is finishing up everything underneath suspension-wise, which uh, consists of down here, you see the leaf spring. Turbo Mike is working on lowering this control arm. We actually bolted it back up. We need to take it down really quick. And then also the sway bar over here. We're gonna get it on the ground, see if we can't get this car started. Right, so the leaf spring went in great. All we're gonna do now is uh, throw this sway bar and should be relatively easy. I got a brand new uh, link here because this one snapped off in the accident. Let me show you exactly what's going on. Just in the case that we don't get this thing started, you guys might have some insight. So basically, as you see now, the car is off the ground. Uh, pretty much everything is hooked up except for, again, that air intake there and the MAF is not hooked up. But there is something new happening, which is, in my opinion, a good sign. So I got my key in the hand here. I've got a red light on here. Okay, when I close the door, it gives me the green light. Now listen. So you do hear the relays clicking, and you hear that. I don't know if that's a fuel pump noise or what we got going on there. But it's definitely better than before. Before, we were getting pretty much uh, nothing. Still a lot of these same messages. Now the reason why we're working on the suspension, number one, because it's gotta get done so we can finish the car, and number two, somebody told me that the reason why my car is not starting is because the front end of it is jacked up. Now, I really find that hard to believe, but we're about to find out. Once we get that sway bar on it, we'll be able to lower this on the ground. It should sit pretty normally at this point, and we're gonna see if that's what fixes our uh, Corvette not starting. The moment of truth, will lowering a Corvette on the ground make it uh, start? All right, yeah, check out the front just in case any fluid or anything spews out. We don't want that to happen. All right, clutch, pedal in. Three, two, one. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> Thanks, dude, on the Corvette forum for your theory of putting the car down on the ground. And, and note, I did not tell him my car was off the ground. He just said that his car was off the ground. That's why his wouldn't start. But the second he put it on the ground, it started, whatever, here. Try putting, not pushing the clutch in. Does the same thing. But see this security thing goes away, you just missed it. It's in this corner here. Everybody's saying that uh, that 
stays on for like 10 minutes the first time you put a new ECM in. Mm -hmm. And honestly, I didn't pay attention to it the first couple times I started it and let it sit and shut it off. But there's a relearn procedure, so anyway. Wow, it has a lot of gas in it. It does have a lot of gas in it. <laughs> Copart was running a special that week. Buy a car from us, get three quarters of a tank. We're gonna do a quick scan here just to see if there's anything obvious that might be holding up uh, the car from starting. Intake air temp, so that's the math. Crankshaft position sensor not learned. Clutch position not learned. Ooh, clutch position. See, that's interesting because if it doesn't realize the clutch isn't in when you're trying to start it, the car's not going to start. Mm -hmm. Hold on, let's see what else here. Intake air sensor. That's it. So we're going to go back. We're going to clear all these. Now, that's an interesting thing. The, uh, the camshaft, what did you say? The camshaft sensor position? You can do a manual one, apparently, or you can use a Chevy... Um, a Chevy diagnostic scanner, which this might do it. I'm but not the, sure. The crank sensor would cause no start, not a no crank. Chevrolet. No, it would it would crank and start, but it runs funny. That's what they say. It runs like in a limo. Most cars that just don't start. Following what you just saw, I went home and did a little bit of research. I was pretty much convinced that fact that the car didn't know the clutch was pushed in is why the car wasn't starting. And using the Corvette form, using my shop manual, I figured out that the car needs whatever this relearn procedure was. And I found out that the only way to do that was with a dealership diagnostic tool. It's what Chevrolet or General Motors calls their Tech 2 scan tool. So I searched them online. One here in the United States to buy runs around $1,500. So it obviously wouldn't be advantageous to be cheaper just to take it to the dealership and have them program it. Then there's a few Chinese clone alternatives. They're like 250 bucks, but then you gotta wait a week or two weeks to get them over from China. And I thought that this was gonna be something that was gonna take a while. Luckily, I found another solution. Let me show you exactly what it is. There was a thread about this on the Corvette form. This is called the VCX Nano. And all it is is an interface that replicates this Tech2 scan tool. So you plug this part into your OBD reader, and then this end has a uh, USB, you plug that into the car. So this thing cost me like 110 bucks. Since it came from Amazon, it came in a few days. I'll put a link in the description box below in the case any of you are having this same problem, which I highly doubt. However, um, when it comes to these kind of aftermarket vehicle diagnostic scanners, there is a little bit of legwork into getting them to work. And one thing I wanna to recommend to you guys, I've almost given this thing away two or three times and I don't think I'll ever give it away until it dies. This is an old, thick Asus netbook. Do you guys remember these things? They were all the rave when they came out because they were so small, but they were terribly slow. It still is terribly slow and it just doesn't work real well. But the big key on these old computers, it doesn't have to be a netbook, but any old school computer has a 32-bit processor. And a lot of these softwares run really well on a 32-bit software. Now, a workaround if you have a modern computer like my Dell here uh, is to run the software off a virtual machine. I've always had a little bit more issue doing that. It's just much simpler to run on an old 32-bit computer. So if you got one of those, make sure you hold on to it in the case that you ever got to do any strange vehicle work like this. I don't think I could be more excited. It's been like a week since we've been trying to start the Corvette, and now that this thing finally came in the mail, uh, I'm pretty certain that this is what is going to do the trick. All right, so we're making some progress. I got everything kind of rigged up here. I've got the old school 32-bit computer running. You can see the Tech 2 software is running there. And let's figure this out. So if we look at F6 module setup, look at what it says right there, just what we need. Those first two, the clutch pedal position learn and the crankshaft position learn. I'm somewhat sure that once we do this clutch pedal relearn, the car will turn on. As all of you guys likely know, your clutch has to be pushed in to start a manual transmission car. So let's do this. Ignition on, engine off, which I'm pretty sure is exactly what we got going on right now. We'll just do this one more time to be sure. Now it's telling us what? Fully depress and hold clutch pedal and hit enter to continue. I just hit enter on the word learn while my foot was on the clutch, and now it's only telling me that there's two codes. So if there's only two codes, we had three before. All right, here we go. Crankshaft position, 
Ooh, intake air, temperature sensor. The clutch pedal position should have been learned at this point. So let's go back. Let's do that crankshaft learn because we don't want to mess anything up. And then, guys, we might, this car might be ready to turn on now, but I'm not going to chance it. Well, we got this thing entirely hooked up. Let's figure it out. All right, I've read this a few times. We got a V8, so we can't exceed 4,000 RPM. We're going to hit enter. We're going to hit enter again. Block, drive, wheel, set, parking, brake. The car is also in neutral, of course, here. And then it says, cycle ignition from off to on. Let's see. Whoa, there it goes. Whoa. You know what? I'm actually going to uh, shut it off. Whoa. Let's hope that there's not a bunch of uh, oil and stuff all over the floor. But that was exciting. Oh man, that was our problem. And I just uh, I just knocked the darn cable out. I'm too excited to care about that. Let's check any oil spillage anywhere. What do we got going on? Nothing. Clean floor, that's what I like to see. It's running, it's running. So I'm gonna real quick hook this up here because you could see it was idling all over the place. It works, it works. All right, intake is in. This is strange, something must plug in there. We'll figure that out later. Uh, got the math plugged in and let's get in. Let's take this old rickety computer that saved my car essentially and the keys and let's do that relearn real quick. All right, car happens to be idling really well even though uh, the check engine light is on it's not hesitating or sputtering right around 600 rpm and uh, we're gonna hopefully get that coolant up to temperature there you can see i've got some water boiling over i always put water in my cars before i go ahead and put the actual coolant in them uh, one time i filled up a mercedes with about 60 dollars full of the uh, mercedes blue coolant and it all went on the ground and i lost it all so it's water for me to begin with once I know that everything's holding and uh, there's no leaks in the system, I'll of course completely dump that water and I'll put it to the uh, Dexcool GM stuff that this car requires. I'm pretty sure this car is about full of water and the temperature gauge hasn't gone over the middle mark here, about 220 degrees, which I think is fairly normal for these cars. So, so far everything is going real awesome in a minute hopefully we'll be able to hook up that uh, cable and do the crankshaft relearn procedure. I did the crankshaft relearn but didn't catch it on camera. Basically I put my foot all the way down on the uh, throttle. It went to 4000 RPM. It cut off. Now the DTCs, that's our diagnostic trouble codes. We're going to hit that one more time because our check engine light went away and we're going to make sure that nothing's showing up. At this point, we've got the math hooked up. We did our clutch relearn and uh, we did the other thing. So what does it say? Let's hit this one more time. View all DTCs. No diagnostic trouble codes. We are good to go. This car is running exactly like it should. So we did it. At the beginning of this video, I said I wanted that car to run, and even though it took a few days, we got it to run. It's a great feeling knowing that you're able to do it yourself with your own resources. I always hate when someone tells you, oh, you gotta take it to the dealership for that. The truth is, you don't. There's actually laws against that. We'll talk about that another time. So we consider that we spent about $125 on the ECU, which we're gonna need anyway, and a used ECU runs about 100 bucks. So this program for 125, again, still a great deal. Spent another 110 or so on the module itself. We own the module and we can use it to work on our car at any time going forward. And it still would be cheaper than taking it to the Corvette dealership to get a new ECU and get a program. Now guys, if you enjoyed hearing that Corvette run, definitely make sure you hit that like button. Also, if you have any questions for me, as always, my contact information is in the description box below. Guys, thanks a whole lot for watching and I will catch you very soon. Mm -hmm.